M0FXB Hamtech, welcome to my channel. Got my TYT TH9800 here. I've got my programming cable. I have tried the original software, which I will show you here is where you download it. But at the moment, it's not actually detecting the port. So I'm sure there's probably a, a programming mode that I haven't turned on. But what I did know is that if you go to Chirp, that worked straight away so i thought well let's do a video showing you how to use chirp and then we'll do try and get the original working because when you've got the original version you can actually i think unlock the radio not that i would ever do such a naughty thing but it'd be nice to know that you can i know you can with older models but this one here with the flat sort of sleeky screen it is I, i'm not sure if you can at the moment if you look at it though, it's a very nice looking set and it's quad band. That's what I love about it. Quad band and AM, air band, marine band. And uh, I've tested it and it, it works great. And these delivered are only about £160. And it's the base station mobile, car mobile, has a full DTMF microphone, nice chunky microphone, PTT buttons on top, four programmable buttons. I really rate it as probably the best starter radio any ham radio operator can get. And yes, you can set it right down to, to five watts, although soon um, the hams will have a better power for these kind of radios anyway. So first thing you do is go to Chirp, go to the download section, Find that chirp download, scroll down, download the latest for chirp. So I probably need to upgrade mine to be honest. Click the installer, you get this message on the top left. Download unverified file. Seems to be like everything is unverified these days. Click chirp, but of course at your risk. Yes, and then we're just gonna go next. And it should up update mine with a bit of luck. I've just tested it, it works fine. Please exit Chirp, it's gonna make me close down Chirp. So I'm just gonna click OK, that'll probably, it's gonna make me shut down Chirp, let me just do that. Just shut that down, click OK, and it's starting to run, nice and easy. Chirp works, as you know, on most, you know, most ham radio, especially the budget ones. Uh, finish, and it should launch Chirp now. We've got the cable connected in the back. Now, if you look at the back of the radio, there's a small square connector just underneath, just by the power cable. You've got quite a nice review here by K4NMP. He does show the back of the radio in a photograph. So let's have a quick look. There's the back of the radio on the left. See if I can expand that. Like so. So if you look there, Okay, just under the power cable, there's a little flap. When you lift that flap, there's a squarey type of micro USB cable that looks like this. Just here, I'll see if I can see that an end view of it. Not that end. <laughs> there it is. It's not easy to see, but it's the squarey type. But you'll see it. Make sure you get the one that fits the 7800 and the 9800. Okay. So plug that into the back of your radio, and then this is what Chirp looks like. We're already connected. So let's just go radio, download from radio. You should find your port, which mine is 10. So if you go right click, device manager. And look, COM10, it says PL203GS USB serial which we have selected here, vendor TYT 9800. It does say it's experimental, there may be bugs, make sure you make a backup of anything you've got. Click OK, and it's now cloning from my radio. I've, had, I've added a few in there already. Let's just make this image smaller so you can see what's going on. Not much to see on the front anyway. So it's now cloning. that finish there you are and it's populated now I did notice it hasn't saved all of the memory channels that I put in there and that's interesting that it didn't do that so let's just add another one so we'll go the ones it didn't actually save was the 70 centimeter one so I wonder if it's if you have to select to show them or whether they can only be put in certain bands let's just put one here anyway so we'll go for four, three, 
4.550. That's my hubnet node. Call it hubnet. When I first sent them to the radio, though, they did all go in, you know. I could try opening the file that I saved. File, open, let's try that earlier. This one. Ah, there's a few more there, isn't there? Let's send that to the radio. Upload to radio. Click OK. Why is it saying Retivis? Okay, <laughs> maybe that's got something to do with it. Radio. Maybe we need to select a different radio. Did I select the wrong radio? Yeah, it was the wrong radio. So I've got the one I did now. So we're going to go. Could you? I saved it. Upload to radio, and then we'll show you how to, how I did it. It's got the radio saved. Click OK. Right, that's cloning to the radio, and you can't actually see anything on the radio when it does this. So we'll let that clone, then we'll add a couple. But you can see here, we've got our repeaters. We select the offset. We select the tone, the type of tone, FM, the power, and the name. <clears throat> and it does work, so I checked. It did reboot after that. Press VM on the left for now. And you can see the names are in there and Hubnet was live then. So let's just... Thanks, Steve. I'll, uh, I'll do that. It's obviously, it's, uh, because the customer just got me license, that's the first contact. I'm still trying to feel my way around. There you go. Hubnet's always a great starting place if you've got, if you're going to get into this hobby. So let's just add one. So we'll add just here. We'll add a simplex. So simplex means it's not a repeater. So when you key the mic, say it's 145500, you will stay on that channel. When you use a repeater, you'll find that when you transmit, it shifts the frequency to a different frequency. So repeaters work this way. If you're using a gateway, they can be on the same one. But if it's a repeater, they have to be different. But anyway, this is a simplex 145.500. So we'll just keep that one four five dot five hundred. So there's no need for a tone. Oh, I didn't remember the dot there. One four five dot five hundred. And oh, I, that's because I put it in the name. So we'll call that S twenty is what they call that channel. Uh, there's no shift. So we've got the frequency. We just, so we want to just shift means you turn that off. It means it will stay on the frequency. Okay, you don't need a tone. When you're using a repeater, you transmit a tone to open the repeater. That's why these repeaters up here have got tones, and I'll show you one now. So let's just do a repeater one. So we'll go to number 10. Let's go 145.600. That's GB3WR. The name? Go caps. GB3WR we have. Uh, then the tone? Tends to always use tone, I do. Uh, then the tone frequency, so it's the this gets sent out when you push the mic. Uh, duplex is when you want that minus shift generally for what we call two meter repeaters. If it's a 70 centimeter or 430 megahertz type repeater, tends to be 7.6. So up here we need to correct that to. 7.600 we've got a couple up here 7.600 there you go that's corrected uh, time then we can set the power here put it on mid for now this is a 50 watt radio um, so then when you're done and you do what I did there go save file save so at least you've got it uh, and then go radio. Oh, let me show you settings first. So you've got all the settings that are inside the radio. Or most of them are all here. Model info. Not touch that. But look, this is where you can open. I think this is where you can open the bands. Look, um, 30 megahertz. You can. It's the start and the finish. This is where you're going to go in and change things. But it doesn't let us do it here. But on the original firmware, I think you can. I don't actually know how to. There probably is a way here. I just don't know how to. Um, and then let's just send that to the radio. Upload to radio. Click OK. At least we've got those memories. So I hope this helps you for now. Chirp. Thanks so much to Chirp. Chirp is so brilliant. 
um, uh, to, I, I'm going to link the original software and links with, with instruction manual and USB drivers and the link for the cable. Everything will be in the description. I'll probably put that link in from um, K4, KM4 NMP as well. Bye for now, 7-3, catch you later.